or moved into the red. So let's see how that one stabilizes. But Sonal is here to tell us about the windfall tax revision and then he'll take that discussion forward with a guest as well. Uh, Sonal, over to you. Well, yes, it's a cut that has come out this time around and on crude oil production, it has been cut to nil. Now, remember, it's, it's a cut and not a discontinuance which has come through in windfall taxes. As far as petrol and ATF is concerned, the duty continues to be nil on exports. And uh, for diesel, it has been cut to 0 0.5 rupees per litre versus 1 rupees per litre earlier. Uh, on this cut, CLSA says, and as we know, that windfall tax was first levied in July, so it has been uh, cut to nil for the first time in nine months now. Uh, Reliance's windfall tax burden, according to CLSA, is at a record low right now. And post-windfall tax realization, government has been allowing it at $75 per barrel, so that's why it's positive for the likes of ONGC and Oil India, and CLSA has a buy here. But important to note uh, that it could be a small uh, short uh, period relief because crude prices, they have inched up again to $85 per barrel. So there could be a possibility it would be revised upwards in the next revision. But yes, for now, it's a positive news that has come through for the oil producers and Reliance Industries as well. All right. Uh, uh, Sonal, thanks very much uh, for that. Prabal Sain is with us, Energy Analyst at ICICI Securities. Prabal, uh, good to have you with us here. How do you look at this? I mean, you know, if one were to uh, think about $75 being that level uh, up to which the government will be okay, we're at 80, almost what, 80, uh, above 80, right? Closer to 85. 85. I believe, yeah. So, uh, yeah, w what's your reading of the situation? No, I think as uh, Sonal was speaking earlier, it's basically based on, I think, what the government's uh, perception of average prices are. And I think till about three days ago, crude prices were, were actually fairly soft. So the decision to reduce it might have been prompted by the persistent softness and therefore, you know, whatever average period the government would have looked at. But I agree with the assertion that uh, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, you know, the revision, the next revision as in when it comes in windfall taxes might actually once again account for the strength that one has seen post the decision by OPEC to cut uh, production. All right. Uh, hi, Prabal. Good morning. Prabal, I want to speak about the city gas distribution companies as well. Everyone yeah. was bracing that this Kirat com uh, Parekh committee report will be accepted and those revisions will come about. Now, this seems as a delay, at least as of now. What are you building in? Do you believe that is just a delay and it comes about? Because the stocks got absolutely uh, you know, hammered in uh, a couple of sessions ago. Your take? Yeah, I think it was a bit of a surprise to see the extent of the price movement. The way that the stocks have moved uh, seems to suggest that instead of a delay, the decision has been postponed indefinitely. I honestly do not have any special insight into what the government is thinking or where it is actually stuck in terms of, you know, deliberations or any revisions that are being spoken about. Our understanding from the reports that we have read suggests that the oil ministry has okayed substantially most of the recommendations and have made a recommendation to the finance ministry uh, to that effect. And that is what has been carried to the cabinet in terms of approval. Now, there might be some uh, you know, uh, some issues with respect to the finer points, uh, with respect to maybe the pricing for the premium gas fields, or indeed the timelines that have been probably recommended for complete free pricing. I honestly do not know. But as of now, our uh, core thesis still builds on the fact that the uh, pricing relief that is expected from the Kirit Parikh recommendations will come through sooner rather than later. Our conversations with the management does suggest that they are also hopeful of that happening. Maybe there are some, uh, you know, technical issues with respect to recommendation due to which it didn't get implemented from April 1 as suggested. But the very fact that the current domestic gas pricing formula has not been carried forward as before. In, instead, the price as prevailing has been basically kept on hold at the same levels does seem to suggest that the government is very serious about implementing a new pricing regime. And since the Kirpari committee recommendations are the only frankly, set of recommendations that we are aware of in terms of the alternate to the current formula, we would still continue to remain positive. We do think that the reaction is a bit of an overreaction, particularly in the case of MGL. And it's understandable if people are looking at MGL in particular because they remain the most sensitive to margin uh, performance compared to, let's say, an IGL, which is more driven by volumes in terms of you know, overall earnings. So to that extent, some of the reaction is maybe uh, a knee-jerk reaction, but we are not really worried about our positive stance on, on the on the space it or could, on the CGD. Yeah, it could be technical uh, issues being sorted out, sir. But as we pointed out, 
it also could be a very simple thing that the cabinet did not meet last yeah. week. You know, so they got to meet to clear. I think so Prabal, it just uh, could be uh, a bunch of those things. But he's absolutely right. Prabal is that. quite confident. Even Kirit Parekh himself <laughs> is quite confident that he'll eventually go through. Right yeah. when we had the conversation yeah. with him, so it's just a matter of time, I guess. Uh, but Prabal, uh, before we let you go, I wanted your thoughts on Petronet LNG because there, you know, cash usage of the company has been a bit of a concern, and now with the way uh, spot LNG prices are moving lower as well, uh, what's your call on the stock? Well, I think, uh, you know, the prospects for Petro definitely look uh, much better than they did probably six months ago. Uh, very clearly, I think the utilization of the Dahej terminal should actually pick up. And I think even the 4Q numbers should actually reflect that to a certain extent with the softest coming through in spot LNG prices, because that has been the biggest driver of weakness in utilization levels. Uh, particularly at the age. So that is something that should actually start to improve. Obviously, it's anybody's guess in terms of how long this, uh, you know, prevailing spot LNG weakness will last. Our sense is that post H1, there is a bit of tightness that should come once Europe comes back to the market to build up its inventories for next year's winter season. But till then, I would I, I would believe that, uh, you know, uh, Petronet uh, numbers should actually continue to improve sequentially. With regards to yeah. the cash utilization issue, I think that is something that they are uh, looking to address by getting into the petrochemical segment. Obviously, it is not something that they have done uh, earlier in terms of you know the size and scope of the project that is being discussed. So the execution of that will probably be a key monitorable over a, over a longer term. But over FI24, I believe earnings should actually continue to pick up at least over the first two to three quarters, uh, driven by the softness in the prices and and and, and a pickup in demand. Got it. All right. We leave it at that, Prabal. Thanks.